Okay, so today I thought I'd do a quick video, as most of you probably already know how to do this, on bathing your dog correctly. Uh, most of it falls down to shampoo you use and the technique you use in the bath to make sure you get deep into the coat to clean out as much grease and debris that the coat has held, like mud, uh, grass seeds, anything like that. Just get it all out so you've got a nice clean coat, pristine, so that you can enjoy it before they decide to roll in another muddy bottle. Coat is going to have a bath. <laughs> and we'll show you what we do. shampoos here in the salon so that I can cater to a whole variety of dog coat types and conditions. Okay so this is your deep clean shampoo. This is what I use as sort of like a base shampoo for most coats. This is great for getting out all kinds of grease, all kinds of debris and leaving you with a nice clean coat which you can then use another shampoo on to leave you with a nicer smell. This one is called peppermint. It does actually smell quite nice on its own and um, generally I tend to use it on the male dogs because it smells a bit more manly. We've got a banana and mango shampoo. This is a cleansing and refreshing shampoo. So it's um, hypoallergenic, it's good for sensitive skin. It also smells really good. <laughs> so for dogs that maybe have already had the deep cleaning shampoo, you would then put this over the top to give them a nicer smell. We then have an everyday type shampoo. Uh, this one's peach and apricot. This is a moisturizing shampoo. So for dogs with dandruff or bad skin or skin condition, you can use this. It adds a good shine to the coat and it really brings out the colors. It's a nice shampoo. All of these you can buy eBay, Amazon, they're all over the place. One thing I would say is if you can buy it in Morrison's, it's not worth having. This one is the Diamond White Shampoo. So, you've got a white dog and uh, they put their food in their bowls, they get orange mouth from all the saliva staining. Um, or you've got a dog like Coda, white paws, white legs, white underbelly, and white chest, and you want to keep it white, this is the one you want to use. It smells great, uh, it obviously has the light colour enhancers in it, which you can do yourself at home just using bicarbonate of soda. It's um, a really good shampoo, brings out the colours brilliantly and cleans up the coat as well. So it's um, a partial deep clean as well with this one as well. My most expensive shampoo <laughs> is the Mandarin shampoo which I only put on the dogs when I'm about to do a show. It is basically them having a spa treatment. Uh, rejuvenates your pet's skin, contains, contains mandarin essential oils, which stimulates circulation up to the skin and brings out the thickness and the luster in the dog's coat. So it's a really nice shampoo, but you've got to, <laughs> you've got to use it with a, um, with a specific brush and a um, facial rub as well so it's got to be done properly in order to get the shine and to get the full effect of the shampoo uh, we also have a lemon refreshing lemon shampoo this one's really nice uh, a good deep clean um, type of shampoo great for sort of smelly dogs because the lemon just gets rid of all of that smell long it, they're all the smells that i've got here they're all long lasting so you'll smell the perfume, if you like, from the shampoo for a good couple of weeks. It won't just disappear the next day. Also got a cherry one, same thing as the lemon. Another one to have in the arsenal for just a, a different type of coat, or if you've got someone that prefers cherry over lemon. Um, it's just a nice, easy, sort of everyday use shampoo 
and all of these are hypoallergenic so they're all good for sensitive skins. Last but not least we have a conditioner. Now on the backs of Coda and NYX for example we have what I call trousers so they're long flary bits out the back of their backside and that was what you would put this one in obviously if you've got dogs like an Afghan hound, really long coated dogs or a briard, something like that, you would use that in order to make sure that your, the hair of the dog doesn't get tangled or at least try and help prevent the tangling. You have obviously got to keep on top of the tangling, <laughs> detangling yourself with all of the brushing that you'd be doing daily. I'm quite lucky with Coda, he's actually got a really nice coat that doesn't seem to tangle or match very easily. So I haven't had any need to use the conditioner in him. Nyx gets a very fluffy bottom <laughs> and gets very fluffy trousers at the back end. So I have used conditioner just to make sure that he doesn't knot up at the back, especially through the winter when he tends to sit in the mud or wander through the bushes and pick up various other things. And yeah, it's, it just makes brushing him through that much easier. As I said, you can buy all of these Amazon, eBay. You don't need a specialist groomer's account to get these kind of things. They're all on there, available for you to use. The, uh, the brand that I use the most is called Groomers. Groomers, obviously I buy it in big tubs because I'm doing a lot of dogs. I do little tubs, <laughs> little bottles, so that you don't need to go to the expense of buying a big tub like that. So today with Coda, as I'm not prepping for a show or anything like that, he's just going to have a normal maintenance bath, if you like, that you would sort of do this kind of breed every two, three months, just to keep on top of their coat, keep on top of their skin health, and to make sure that they don't start smelling doggy. Especially if they're in and out of the house, you want them smelling nice, you want your house to still smell nice. So what I will use on him, as he hasn't got to the point of being greasy and you can feel it when they become greasy. So I don't need the deep clean one, I will just go straight for the whitening shampoo to keep his whites white. You have to make sure that you're using dog specific shampoo because their pH level for their skin is completely different to ours. So you can't go into Morrison's and grab Pentan Pro V or something like that and expect it to work just as well on them without giving them any problems. They have a slightly more alkaline pH, meaning they need a specific tailored dog shampoo. You can't, you can get dog shampoo in Morrison's, but it's not going to be as effective as one that you will get straight from a grooming shop. eBay, Amazon, they still grooming shops and they will still have done the research into the shampoos and provide a much better range and a much better quality of shampoo than Morrison's will do. So my recommendation is to make sure that you buy your dog shampoo from eBay, from Amazon, from a dog grooming retailer rather than Morrison's. Aldi, anything like that. Don't get it from your normal everyday food shop. Another bit of equipment I recommend for bathing, especially double coated breeze, is one of these bad boys. Is a rubber, is a rubber brush, I suppose. Um, basically, when your dog's wet and your dog's all shampooed up, you want to use one of these to get the shampoo deep into the skin, straight to the skin and let it do its job properly. And then you wanna let the coat sit there with the shampoo in it before you then shampoo it off. So here's the time lapse of what we're doing and how I bath Coda.
Okay, so he's just had his first soak and we're just getting this shampoo soaked in on this side. The reason I leave it in is because the shampoo has obviously ingredients in it which do a job. So you want to leave it in for a little bit to do its job before you then wash it out. This is the rubber, the rubber thing. As you're brushing the shampoo in, it's driving the shampoo deeper into the coat so that it can help down at skin level. As well as on the top layers. I use that all the time on pretty much every dog that comes in, unless it's hairless, <laughs> and then it doesn't get used. We've only done, so we've done one side, I then turned him round, I then did the second side. I then did the tail on this side. If you make it wet right at the beginning and they decide to wag or shake, then that goes everywhere. So yeah, the tail gets done on the second turn. You then do the front and the face, you do the face last. They're most likely going to shake as soon as you do the face. If you get water down their ears or they feel like it's about to go down their ears, then they shake. So you leave the face till last so that you can at least prepare yourself for a shake. Now obviously this bit's the drying bit, um, you'll obviously probably towel dry your dogs at home. I'm going to blast Coda because I've got access to a blaster so I'm going to use it. A blaster gives me the opportunity to blast out all of his undercoat and obviously gets him dry quicker. Depending on the breed of your dog, if you've got a short coated breed, a good towel dryer is probably all they're going to need. Double coated breed like him, if I left him the rest of the evening he would take a good couple of hours to dry on his own, probably longer. So blasting is what I need to do if I want him in the house <laughs> this evening. <laughs> so I will get him out of the bath so he can stop staring at me <laughs> and I'll get him dry. <laughs> Then you just want to give them a quick brush through to make sure your towel drying or your blasting hasn't given them any knots. So a quick brush and it will get rid of any of the extra loose coat that the blasting or the towel drying has loosened and then you're good to go. Your dog is done. Yeah boy. So I'll give them a quick brush through but I'll let you go. So don't forget to subscribe for me and I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.